Hey everybody, uh, Adam Savage in my cave with a show and tell and unboxing and um, I have to admit what I'm unboxing here today is an unboxing and show and tell I've been wanting to do for a couple of years. I know. Um, I've often said that when I collect props, when I make props, when I collect them, when I trade them, when I acquire them, my goal with the props and the pieces of history and ephemera that I collect is that I'm always looking for an experience, a an authentic experience with that object. So <clears throat> for me, once I knew what the Blade Runner gun was uh, comprised of, once I understood its structure, nothing less than that structure was going to satisfy me uh, for the Blade Runner gun of my dreams. Um, and within that desire for a deeply authentic experience, um, you don't know this, but I am super obsessed with old paper ephemera. I did my own Indiana Jones Grail Diary um, about 20 years ago now. And I have always made little booklets. I've always loved the book as a form as a execution, as a solution to a problem. Um, literally, I've made like little booklets when I was in second grade. I remember stapling them and being like, this is my booklet and here's some drawings. And at the end, it was like, thank you for reading my booklet. Um, <laughs> there's an aspect of the satisfaction I felt back then that I can still tap into. <clears throat> so I love paper ephemera. And I collect replicas of old things. Like I'm always picking up different versions of the um, of the, uh, the the Magna Carta um, because I love the idea of the Magna Carta. Uh, I still haven't found the perfect replica. I have replicas of the 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 the, the, um, the Declaration of Independence, which you can buy at the museum. Um, they're beautiful. They're on parchment. Uh, and I have made some of my own. Um, and a bunch of years ago, I kind of got a bee in my bonnet about replicating some Leonardo da Vinci things. And it's just really hard to get consistent scans and their color timing is all over the place. And I kind of went way down the rabbit hole on this uh, 10, 10 or 15 years ago. Uh, and every now and then I have dipped back in. And a, a few years ago, I was searching for reference material for Da Vinci replicas. <clears throat> and I came across this guy, um, Stefano Tartaglioni. Stefano is Italian, as if you couldn't guess by his name. <clears throat> I apologize right up front for all my Italian pronunciations are going to be abysmal today. So Italians, bear with me. Um, Luckily, uh, Italians are known for their great sense of humor, <laughs> which you will need when I keep on butchering your beautiful language. Um, Stefano Tartaglioni is a, to say he's a replica maker, it doesn't quite cut it. Uh, he calls himself a paper sculptor, and I think that is drifting into the right zone because uh, I own a couple of replicas of his already, and in this box is another one. And I think if I'm correct, this is the Codex Forester number one. I've just purchased it from him uh, before Christmas. <clears throat> and um, well, let's just crack into it. I'm gonna, we're gonna open this up. We're gonna take a look at it. We'll talk about Stefano's incredible, um, incredible finesse as an artist and a maker. Uh, and uh, in subsequent videos, I'll cover some of the other pieces of his that I have collected. Um, he makes pieces that museums buy to put on display as an as if, like if we really had the Codex Forester, here's exactly what it looks like and it'd be put on a pedestal. Um, I am not a museum, but <laughs> this is expensive. Like this is museum level expensive. Like I, I paid real money for this and it is, his work is so beautiful. It is worth every freaking penny. Um, we'll include a, a I think he has a Facebook page. We'll include a link. Um, I'm not sure if he has a commerce page, but if he does, we'll include a link to that too. All right, let's get into it. Uh,
Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Is there a box? What? What? What the? Oh my God. Yes. Oh my God, it is the Forester number one. Um. Uh, sorry, I should name his company. And again, I'm gonna get this, I'm gonna butcher this. Or Stefano's uh, company is Collezioni Apocrypha Da Vinci. All right. Oh my God, I'm so excited. Okay, here, here's your close up. That's a nice B roll. Oh my goodness, all right. Oh, wow, oh, wow. Wow, it's a description of what's on every page. Incredible. Okay, first of all, this is a magnificent presentation case. Um, look at this, this is just absolutely gorgeous. I'm not sure what the mirror is for. Oh, of course I know what the mirror is for because Da Vinci wrote backwards. That's what the mirror is for. <laughs> This is the Codex Forester number one. Oh. oh, oh, look at this. So here's the thing about Stefano's replicas. Every stain, every dark spot, every tear in the paper is accurate to the original. So like this little tear here, that's accurate. And the foxing around the outside, the edges of his pages, I find myself as I look up close at his work, I am at a loss as to how to explain how much it feels like an ancient object. Mm. Oh, oh, look at this, look at this. Look at this geometry. So here's the thing for me is that to me, this is oh, look, apparently uh, Da Vinci invented the Rubik's Cube. Uh, never get tired of flipping through the pages of these things. Um, yeah. Oh. Little tears. Little stains. All right, so. I want to try and see if I can show you some aspects of this that are really quite remarkable. Um, here's one right here. We, we can see through the back side of this page to the other side, and that's accurate to the real thing. However, that's not what's actually happening here. The ghostly image of the other side has been printed on here, but the registration is perfect. I will tell you that perfect registration is really difficult when doing copies like this. It, uh, 
Wow. Um, as far as I'm concerned, there is just, it's really hard to beat this experience. Um, and when people come to the cave, I often break out one of these and show it to them and let them flip through it because like, there's only one of these in the world, a Codex Forester number one, and Da Vinci drew it, and it is surpassingly priceless, and none of us are ever going to get a chance to, to sit and flip through it. But this, oh, oh, there you go. But this can give one the experience. Um, oh my goodness. Uh, this can give one an authentic experience. And I have this idea of a box of impossible objects that like you'd never be able to handle otherwise. And the gems, remember when I built the gemstone storage case, I was also thinking the same thing of that. And that there is like a, oh, I mean, that is a genuine, like, Da Vinci era stain that has been meticulously scanned and copied and printed onto this. Oh, look at that, his signature. I mean, maybe that's his signature, or maybe that's one of his students writing his name. You never know with the, with the Leonardo. Um, one of the other things about these books is that the first time I bought one from him, it came and I had the same experience I am having with this one, which is just pure unadulterated joy. But there's an aspect to it that was surprising to me. And that is, it smells like an old book. How does it smell like an old book? None of my paper props smell correct, because why would they? They're all full of modern glues and laser printing and stuff like that. I mean, this is an edition of 500, so I'm assuming that they took their scans and actually did some, did real offset printing for this, because I noticed no, I don't know. I mean, maybe this is laser printed. It's just so freaking well done. I mean, I'm in awe. Sorry, what was I saying? It smells like a real book. How does it smell like a real book? And so I thought about it and I thought, all right, well, as a book is deteriorating, it's releasing a set of chemicals. Wait a minute. I wonder if someone makes a scent of old book. <laughs> yes, they do. Um, I found two colognes that smell like old books. One is called In the Library, number 306. It's very, um, it's a very sweet smell. It's a little more acidic here. Um, and then this one is Demeter. Uh, they make all sorts of different, they make money. They do all sorts of weird, wonderful scents. Uh, scents. Yeah, see, I think this might be how they made this smell like an old book, which is a level of, like, chef's kiss perfection as far as I'm concerned. Um, okay, let's get the camera over here so I can... Look here, here is a compass he's drawing. I think he's showing how to find the center of a circle. Um, here's a compass he's drawn, and you can see the ghostly image of the compass on the other side. But that's not because this is staining through, it's because 
Yeah, it's the alignment is perfect. Wow. More geometrical figures. Oh. Oh. Just look here, look here, look up here. Hold on. Look at that. I have never seen a replica actually get the look of the edge of the paper so right. Here you go. I mean, it's like he has carefully gone over every centimeter of every page in order to make it an authentic replica. I mean, I don't even know. I'm kind of mystified as how you do this and not make it look like it's cut. Does he cut it with an exacto and then hand dye the edge of every piece of paper? I, that could be. Oh. Oh, look at this. What wonders. What a beautiful One of the first things that surprised me looking into Da Vinci is to find out how many codices there are, how many codexes. Um, I mean, he was constantly drawing and constantly making notes, but it wasn't like he like had this in his pocket and this was his little reporter's notebook that he was constantly like, oh, here's a new idea. Uh, from what I understand, and please correct me if I'm wrong or direct me to where I can read about this, but from what I understand, it was more like he took his notes and compiled them into, into these. Um, and so there's a little more planning than I originally thought. They're not just like sketchbooks. They're more like compendiums of specific lines of thought or, or you know, period of time of thought. Um, and so there was a lot of copying and recopying, apparently. And <clears throat> so in essence, you're getting a kind of, I don't know, there's a way in which this feels like a genuine experience that moves me just a little bit towards Da Vinci the person, the creator of this. I'm handling, I think, the closest possible simulacrum of the real object, which is also giving me a kind of a simulacrum of an experience of what that object would deliver to me, which is an insight into the maker. And for that, I am so grateful and I consider that absolutely a worthwhile expense to have such a thing in my collection. And I do view it as a collection and not of a collection of objects that are mine. They are objects that will outlive me and that I am currently a steward of. Um, this Codex Forester one is the most recent object I am a steward of. And while it is diminutive in size, it is expansive in its experiential potentialities. Uh, and Stefano Tartaglioni, I, did I get that right? Hold on, I'm just checking. Tartaglioni, <laughs> sorry. Stefano, um, your work is magnificent and I am honored to be a collector of it. Uh, I already own Forrester number two. I bought that a few years ago. So uh, the next thing I'm going to receive from him is Forrester number three, and then I'll have a complete set of the Forrester codices. Do you say codices or codexes? 
It's a good, I, mean, I think it's codices, but I don't know. Um, it smells so good. <laughs> <laughs> I love the idea of a cologne that smells like old book. That is that is totally my kind of cologne. Um, I don't think there's much more to go over about this. Uh, oh, look at these geometrical constructions. I mean, there's something about seeing it on a page right here that nothing else quite equates to. Not even printing it out yourself and making a little booklet this size, although that would be a fun exercise. Um, I really am mystified by the decal edge, by the worn paper edges and how irregularly they are worn. That just means to me that every single page was manipulated. Like, there's a photo of Stefano at his workbench using an exacto to cut the edge of a piece of paper on glass. Now, I think that that might actually give him uh, what looks like a non-cut edge because there's no, um, you know, you cut on a cutting mat and the blade buries through the paper into the cutting mat. There's all this kind of force kind of moving stuff around and a cut edge looks like a cut edge. But maybe cutting on the glass is one of the ways he avoids that. Damn. Oh, man. Oh. <clears throat> As I said, in subsequent videos here, I will show you the other pieces of Stefano's that I have collected. And when another one arrives in a few months, uh, I will show you that one too. I've been wanting to show you this for so freaking long. Um, this, again, incomparable work, uh, a beautiful experience, uh, one that I am eternally grateful. <laughs> Excuse me. One that I am eternally grateful for. Thank you guys for joining me for this show and tell. I'm Adam Savage, and I will see you next time. Cheers. Ah, oh, I almost forgot. <laughs> almost forgot. So sorry. Inside this beautiful presentation case, which is going to be a beautiful addition to my library, there is a mirror. Why is there a mirror? Oh, it's actually glass. Why is there a mirror? Is there a mirror? You can see your, you can see me. There we go. Ooh. Anyway, uh, there is a mirror, and it's not just to look at yourself because you're pretty. No, no, no. There's a mirror because Da Vinci wrote all of his notebooks backwards. He, he, <laughs> yeah, his hand, he had a special handwriting that was backwards. So if you want to look at it, and again, it helps if you read Italian, which I do not. But if you want to read it, you read it by holding up the glass and reading the mirror image. <laughs> Look at that. Um, notice that you can see, hold on, let's see if I can do this. All right, here we go. So as you can see, he wrote backwards. These, these sentences are all written right to left and they're backwards because Da Vinci figured out a code. This is how he encoded his notebooks and made them hard to understand. So the mirror is so that, look at that. Now you can see the ABC. Yeah. Now you can read Da Vinci in the original. All right, the focus is, ah, focus. Anyway. Yeah, I love that they included a mirror. That is genius. Ooh. Oh, hi. How you doing?